All right, welcome back to the Summer Bible Study, Jesus, John, and Women. And today we are dealing with Mary and her alabaster box. Now, this lesson will open your eyes to some of the things that many Black women experience in the Black community right now. And the sense of entitlement and the sense of rage that there can be for men when a woman decides that she's not going to be available to every man and how angry that they get when they think about some other man may have gotten what he wanted, but they cannot. Men have had this problem. It has nothing to do with blackness for a very long time because a man, even one who presumably knows God will be unhappy to see a woman worshiping God in his face. If it is no benefit to him, because remember, all the way back in Genesis 3, the argument has been Satan offered Eve and Adam standing by her because she turned around and gave it to him. Doesn't say he had to go, she had to go find him. When you eat this fruit, you will be like God. Eve was deceived, but Adam wasn't. So he ate that fruit with the full idea, which is why God comes after him so hard to be like God. So now men are competing to have God's spot. And when a woman gives more to one man than another, it hits his insecurity in the face about the fact that, no, sir, you are not. A, this is how my, their minds work. You're not as good a man as the one before, but also not like God because you have been rejected. You have lost the opportunity to be coddled, to be worked, to be admired, to be worshipped. This is not a problem that began with black men, nor will it end with black men. This is a problem of women, men in general. And the Lord Jesus squashed this so hard that there are seven or eight names that you will not know again till you walk into the New Jerusalem and read them, most likely. I said in the last video about Mary, Jesus, the video actually, no, two weeks ago, I'm recording a lot of these on the same day, when Mary, we meet Mary and Martha and Luke that Mary chose to show her worship of God at that time in Jesus Christ at that time. And Jesus protected her from Martha demanding that she get up and return to being lost in the sauce of trying to work to produce her to prove her value. The Lord Jesus takes on his own disciples. And when I say that some of us will not remember some of these people's names till we go read them. There's a reason why. All right. Let's, and this is not a long lesson by comparison. It's pretty straightforward. There are just some things I need you to see. It's not as long as some of the others that we have done. And so much so that, no, because we still got to do the, the, the lesson from Revelation. So let's have a look at this. Um, okay. And the title of this lesson is... Jesus, Mary anoints Jesus at Bethany. Now, in some of the other Gospels, her name is not mentioned, but we just happen to have it in John who this actually was that did this. This is John 12. Six days before the Passover, Jesus therefore came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Now, if you remember from last week, that was John chapter 11. So here we are in the very next chapter. So they gave a dinner for, them, for him there. Okay, so... <laughs> They gave a dinner for Lazarus for being raised from the dead. But like I said, this was a moment of great celebration. A moment of, oh, first of all, who has this happened for before? But also, Lazarus was essential to these, to the life of the community around him, apparently. He definitely was essential to his sisters. So they gave a dinner for him there in Bethany. He's also a local celebrity, as you find out later. Motorcycles and such. And car alarms, please, bother, please pardon my neighborhood being noisy. Um, you find out that he probably people are coming from all around Israel realizing that he's raised from the dead. So he's put Bethany on the map. So they have a dinner for him. Lazarus is one of with one of those reclining with him at the table. So Jesus is there eating dinner with Jesus. Jesus is there eating dinner with Lazarus. Martha's doing what Martha does. Martha served. Remember that the Lord did not rebuke her for serving. He rebuked her for being so lost in the sauce on that, trying to prove how valuable she was, trying to, to gain favor with him by works. But he didn't rebuke her for serving. There's nothing wrong with Martha serving, per se. 
Mary, as usual, is kind of on her own page. Mary therefore took a pound of expensive ointment made from pure nard. It's a very, very, very expensive herb at that time. And anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. Now we find out later on, many of you know the story of the alabaster box. The nard came in an alabaster box. The box itself is highly expensive. Alabaster and marble are really close together. This is a very, very expensive spice. She took a whole pound. 16 solid ounces and made could be 12 ounces they could be using average juice but actually though let's check okay a litre 11 and a half pounds or 327 grams so yeah it is close to the pound with which you measure gold i mentioned it because precious things are measured on average rupees are gold weight and uh, troy weight my, my bad let me get this straight Aver average rupees weight is the weight we use to measure sugar and butter, a 16 uh, ounce pound. Troy weight is how you measure gold. And Troy weight is close to the Greek litra. And when you measure precious things, 12 ounces, or in this case, 11 and a half, is a pound. That just kind of came to mind because nard was so precious. So she took 12 ounces of stuff, 11 and a half, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, he who was about to betray him, said, why was this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? Well, let's have a look at how much is that. A denarius is a day's wage for a laborer. Okay, so and like I said before, in, when we met Mary and Martha, the ancient Jews were caught up in a system where you did, you did the sacrifices that were at the temple, but you also hoped to earn God's favor by works. So you're out here doing what are called mitzvahs, doing good deeds, hoping that they stack up for you in favor with God. And one of the biggest mitzvahs that you could do was by giving to the poor. The Proverbs have a lot to say, and even later on in the New Testament, the book of James, have a lot to say about giving to the poor. It's important to God that you do that. And so Judas is sounding very holy here. There's just one problem. He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put in it. Remember what I said at the beginning? Men have a really hard time of watching a woman do something for another man if there's no benefit to him. And there's a really deeper issue here, and I'll get to it in a little bit. But in Judah's case, it's simple. You know, you doing all this for him. I ain't getting nothing out of it. Let me come up with a semi, with a holy sounding reason to rebuke this woman for daring to do something for a man not that doesn't benefit me in my face. That's what's happening here. Jesus said, leave her alone so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For the poor you always have with you, but you do not always have me. Okay. And remember I told you Jesus protected Mary before? He also protects her here. Now, in Matthew, he writes about it. Now, he was there. He was one of the 12 disciples. He's one of the names that we remember. Matthew was there, and he gives it to us a little bit more roughly than this. But Mary is the only person who realized he was going to be crucified. Mary is the only person in all these stories that we've ever told who realized that he's about to die. This was the kind of thing they may have bought it to put it on Lazarus for that matter, but of course they never got a chance to do that because he rose from the dead. It's possible. This is the kind of thing, you know, when, when you had a king born, you know, you bought gold and frankincense and myrrh for a burial. This is in that order of things. Mary is the only person who understands what is about to happen, that he is about to be crucified. She is also the only person whoever anointed his body because just like Lazarus, Jesus is going to get up out of the grave. And there was a stone, just like there was with Lazarus, put by the tomb to keep the animals out. So by the time he got out, he was alive. None of the women, there are people who bought spices and they were going to do this at the tomb. And by the time they got there, the angel was sitting there talking about, he's not here. He's risen as he said. None of them got to use all the things that they bought. The only person who was able to honor Jesus in regard to his death and burial is Mary, the sister of Martha. She is the only person. His disciples don't get it. No one gets this except Mary. 
And so she knowing that he is about to go to Jerusalem and accomplish his decease, as it says in the King James Version, is the only person who is able to take something that was usually used for the precious dead and put that on him and get it on his body. She's the only one. And Jesus is gentle in his rebuke, as John recorded. But John's, as we have seen, is very sensitive and very gentle in his presentation. Matthew was a hard-nosed tax collector. So we're going to see a couple different things. But here he says, the poor you always have with you, but you do not always have me. Just a reminder, just a reminder, being able to worship me in the body is something that no one's going to get to do for two thousand years at least it is the year 2022 no one has worshiped jesus in the flesh in the presence of his fully mortal body in all that time with the exception of the lord jesus visiting john and we'll see that in the book of revelation <laughs> excuse me hold on a second y'all need some water all right, much better now. I was saying, no one has had the privilege of worshiping Jesus in the flesh for 2,000 years, with the exception of John having met him again in the book of Revelation. And we will get to that when we close out our summer Bible study, where Jesus is man, but also God. But even when we get to Revelation 1, Paul said about the Lord Jesus, we no longer know him after the flesh. He's no longer in a body like ours. It's glorified. And, and as you meet John and see his reaction to the Jesus that he knows, but in his fully glorified state, when Jesus said, me, you have not always, you just come up and touch and do all this. Stuff. No, this time is completely running out. And this is why he says this particular thing to Judas at this time. But we're going to find out it was not just Judas. Judas started it. Matthew gives us more details. Okay, so we find out some things. The, the dinner was given in the home of Simon, Simon the Leopard. This is Matthew 26, by the way. And we know that these two things line up because John 12 and Matthew 26 line up in terms of the time in Jesus' life that they're talking about. Okay? While Jesus is in Bethany at the home of Simon the leper, a woman came to him with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume, which she poured on his head as he was reclining at the table. So this is the same incident. We just don't have Mary's name. With the disciples. Now we're not just talking about Judas. We're talking about that all the disciples saw this. They were indignant. Why is this waste? She used a whole pound. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. Stop. For just a second, I want you to focus on this one word. And it tells you something about the nature of men. Jesus is the recipient of this abundant physical worship. It's expensive. It's worth a day's wage. By this time, Jesus has already raised Lazarus from the dead. The disciples have seen everything that he's done. Peter has even confessed that he is the son of the living God. Mary has confessed it. The disciples were there. He's proven it. And yet, what Mary does for Jesus on this occasion to his own disciples is a waste. To his own disciples. Worshiping Jesus is a waste to his own disciples. And in the case of Judas, we know specifically what that is. But the rest of the disciples are furious, indignant. This perfume could have been sold at a high price and the money given to the poor. They want to be the ones giving out the money to the poor. They want the respect. They want the mitzvahs. And they're saying, I want you, I, I, I need you to understand this right here. Even if the man in question is God himself, which is why we're going to close out the lesson the way we are. Jesus is man, but also God. It is a waste because they don't have access to these resources to do what they want to do with it. And they attack Mary.
It's nothing new under the sun. Men have a really hard time watching a woman do something for anybody else, not them. They have a really hard time with it. This is why if you're a single mother, therefore a man knows you gave your body to some man, had sex, had gave him a child, if you will. And so why they get mad when you get to the point that you listen to Level Up Single Mom, shout out to Level Up Single Mom, and you realize that you can level up single mom and you don't have to continue to do this. They want you to believe that your chances in life are over, that you're never going to get a good man, that you ought to be just willing to, to give access to yourself. And some of these perverts want your kids too for the privilege of having them around. Because they cannot bear to think about you, you esteeming another man better than them that you would allow him to have access. You won't let him. you allow that man to have access to you and give him a child, but you won't do it for this man. You give that man over their sex, but you won't do it for him. Men have a very hard time and their anger about this goes all the way to women who will belong to God. Black men have a lot to say about the black church and about the black pastors. Well, those black pastors may be running whatever game they're running, but they're doing it much more successfully than the average black man is doing. They have more, they have a bigger building, they have more suits, they have more jewelry, they have more cars, and they have more women serving them. Male content creators that have a lot of devoted female followers get men coming on angry and furious because these content creators have more men. There is one very known in the circle that is in my subscriber base between someone who is in the, a man in the divestment sphere, which and BWE, which makes no sense to me, but it is what it is, who keeps attacking another man who's not exactly adjacent, but discovers, talks about a lot of the same issues. And it's the only reason that anybody can figure out this is that person B has a lot of devoted female followers who absolutely love him and many more subscribers than person A. Person B is not getting, person B is getting the adoration and the attention and the faithfulness that person A would like to have and cannot get. And men who are trying in Genesis 3 to be like God will resent a woman worshiping God, they will resent a Christian woman saying, no, I can't lie down with you because God says not to do that. Even if he's, she's not sexing another man. This is why men are listening to J. Cole talking about whatever she tells you multiplied by three. So you have a reason to get even madder. It's not that she may have had sex with one man before you. It's that and there's at least three she thinks are better than you. It's not that she may have had sex with three men before you. It's because you now up to nine and ten who she thinks are better than you, who she thinks are more worthy of you, because this is the nature of men. How dare you as a woman show respect, admiration, and worship to someone else in front of me? And I don't get to benefit from that. I don't get to prove, I don't need to, I don't get resources to prove that I can win favor with God by my works, by doing my mitzvahs, that I can't take that money and rip it off and put it in my pocket. How dare you put it in Christian ministry? How dare you give to the poor? How dare you do this in front of me? This is an old problem. And in the black community, you just have to understand, ladies, that men will kill you about this. But I'll tell you what, if you belong to Jesus Christ, let me tell you how many thousands of years Jesus will protect a woman who worships him for. Aware of this, Jesus said to them, not just to Judas, why are you bothering this woman? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When she poured this perfume on my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. And like I said before, we looked at it in John. She is the only woman who ever will. Because the rest of them don't figure it out in time. And by the time the other women roll up to anoint him at the grave, he's up out of there alive and living forevermore. She's the only one who understands what he's about to do. Truly, I tell you, wherever this gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. More people know the names of Mary and the Alabaster Box than know the names of all 12 disciples. They paid a heavy price for this. He said he's going to give them a memorial. He her a memorial. More people know about Mary and that alabaster box. So let's go through this. Let's go through this particular fact. Unless you are a serious-minded Bible student. I mean, there was a time in my life, I mean, I could sing a song about there were 12 disciples that I learned a child evangelism. 
But off the top of my head, I can't give you the name of all 12 of those disciples without doing some work. And I'm a reasonably good Sunday school student. You figure I've gone through it a bunch of times. But on average, Peter, everybody knows Peter. <laughs> and so there's also Peter, James, and John. And John, we know because he wrote the book of John and 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and Revelation. And we know Matthew. So Peter, James, John, and Matthew. Now, if you really know your Bible stories, you may remember, if you really know your Bible story, you may remember Philip, Andrew, and Nathaniel. But that's, we're already beyond the pale for most people. Really, there are only about four disciples who are remembered by the average person. Meaning that eight of them more people know about Mary and the alabaster box than there are that know about eight of these. And of course, people know Judas. Seven. People know Judas because he was a betrayer. So Peter, James, John, Matthew, and Judas. Seven of these complaining disciples' names have been forgotten to the average Christian mind. But more Christians know about Mary and the alabaster box than seven of these complaining men. Most people will not remember the names of these men till we all tip on into the New Jerusalem and read them on the foundation. When I tell you that Jesus knows how to protect you over 2,000 years and counting of time, ladies, for your faithfulness to him, I meant that. I meant that. Because he said, this story is going to be told in memory of her because she chose to worship me. And he made those men stop. And he recognized her and he remembered. And anything that you have done for the Lord Jesus Christ, in the face of opposition from people who were jealous, in the face of opposition from men that were jealous, whenever you decide that you're going to live a life, that you're going to live sexually pure now, that you're going to live and wait on God to send you a man and to live a peaceful, productive, chaste life as a single woman, you will be attacked to men who feel like they're being passed over again. And at this point, Jesus is not visible, so they're being passed over for a man they can't even see. You will be attacked. If you happen to be not a Christian and listening and you decide to live a peaceful and pure single life because it is the best for you and your children, you will be attacked. Because men do not like to see a woman doing more for another man than she will do for him. It hits their insecurities. It hits their insecurities about being rejected again. It hits their insecurities about I'm out here trying to be God. And this woman has proved that I'm not because she, she's rejected me. And again, I'm telling you, there are men that will kill you for this. There are men that will mess your children up for this. There was a case just recently. A man decides to, because she's going with another man, he kills her three children and himself for revenge. This is serious. This is deep. But for those of you who name the name of Christ, and I'll tell you what else, a godly man will protect you. Joseph, before the angel arrived, believed that Mary, who was engaged to him, had given her body and was giving a child to someone else. But already, because of the character of the man that he was, it was not his desire to have her dragged out and stoned, and in some cases, even burned alive. He was going to divorce her privately. That's a godly man. And then when the angel came and told him what was really going on, he went, he got married, he took her away from all the people that was scorning her, put her up in his house, and took care of her all the rest of his life. That is a godly man who is not going to force you to be choosing between the will of God and him. If it is the will of God for the two of you to be together, you will find the will of God together. A godly man will understand that his main service is to God as well. So he's not going to have make you have these conflicts between God and him as much as possible. Now, the scripture does say the problem about marriage is that we do have to live in the flesh. So sometimes even a godly man will be off a little bit. And because he's going to be off a little bit, this is what makes submission so hard. But at least you have the power to go back to God, the Holy Spirit, God, the Father, and say, okay, I'm going to need you, the Spirit, to help you explain some things because your son here is in my brother here, who's my husband, is in the flesh. So I'm going to need you to get him back into the Spirit. At least you have that to go with. 
the essential nature of men is the essential nature of men. They do not want to see women giving attention to other men in their presence. Men will compete with their own children for attention from a woman. Men will discard another man's children by murder to get back at a woman he doesn't feel is paid attention. You hear men talking about how they don't want to be a stepfather and when you sit down and talk about it, it's just that that woman's always going to prioritize that child over him. This is a thing. They will go so far as to understand that a woman who is serving God is disrespecting them. Although, and I must say this for the record, anyone who's married must understand that God has called you to ministry in your home before ministry at a church building. If you do not want to deal with that, you need not get married. I have time to do this because I'm a single woman. When you get married, I did not say have a boyfriend. I did not say have a baby daddy. I did not say have a living lover. I didn't say none of that. But if you should get married, you do have to understand that God holds you accountable for building up your home. The wise woman builds her house. Same thing goes the other way, though, because preachers' sons and daughters are a proverb. They spend so much time at the church building that they do not know their children. And in many times, Sir Walter Jones and Sir Walter Jones show says this is why their children end up hating them. When you are married and you have a family, the first priority needs to be your family. And that is what God expects of you. But there is this general tendency. But if you are serving the Lord Jesus Christ as a woman and he leads you away from a man that he sees is going to do nothing but attack you or you're in a situation where you can't go at the moment and men begin to attack you because they're insecure, Jesus will protect you. If you're not married, he's just, he'll have the spirit that you know. Time to go. Time to go. When you see this kind of behavior, it's time to go. When you see men that are insecure because you have a life, that competes with them for importance is time to go. Because this is something in the nature of men that will not be removed. It will not. Until the resurrection that Martha was talking about in Matthew 11. When this, we are saved to sin no more. When we are past this phase of existence. Other than that, this will continue to be a thing. Men will men who are not walking by the spirit think what is done for God is a waste because it's not done for them. Be aware, ladies, that this is the reality. And this story illustrates it. But if you trust in the Lord Jesus, he will reward and protect you. And the work that you have done, motivated by his spirit, will not be lost just because men attack it. I have a little story time to tell you. I belong to a Bible teaching tradition that is now about 80 years long. Dr. Desi Webster formed Fellowship Bible Institute, which was the first Bible school of its type west of Mississippi founded by a black woman. Every black pastor in town attacked it because a woman founded it. Well, Desi Webster because she had been called by the Lord to do that. No man had been called to do that. And if they were, they were ignoring it. Desi Webster went on with what she was doing and founded that school. Desi Webster was my grandmother's teacher. Desi Webster lived a little longer and was my father's teacher. Desi Webster lived a little longer and was my mother's teacher. Dr. Desi Webster, I have actually heard her teach because my grandmother took me to class with her. So Dr. Desi Webster taught three gener two generations of my family and was my mother's teacher, my father's teacher, my grandmother's teacher, was the teacher of a lot of the other teachers who were teaching here in the San Francisco Bay Area. So even though these black men got mad and attacked this woman for serving the Lord, I'm telling y'all about the name of Dr. Desi Webster so that you now remember her because when the Lord Jesus knows what you did for him, he makes sure your name gets remembered. I have now put this on the internet. Dr. Desi Webster, Fellowship Bible Institute, San Francisco, California. Because the Lord knows how to make sure that no matter how men contradict what he's given you to do, he'll make sure you get your reward.
And gentlemen, I do know some men. Sergeant Rufus Abercrombie, El Bethel Missionary Baptist Church, who was contradicted by an awful lot of women there because he saw things that needed to be done for the church, but it was going to bankrupt their programs for the year. God back Sergeant Rufus Abercrombie up made a whole lot of women go sit down and the stuff that needed to happen for the church got done. Just so y'all know, I don't play favorites. I do both. God will make sure that no matter who's attacks you, you get what you want. But because we are in a situation right now when black men want to take it out of black women for doing whatever it is God has called them to do and bettering their lives and bettering the lives of the community, and they are just having an absolute fit called the manosphere about it, it is important for you to know that if you are doing it in love and worship of the Lord Jesus, he will protect you. And he will make sure you he will not forget your work. And he knows perfectly well. I can't name any of the pastors who oppose Dr. Desi Webster. They are forgotten. Fellowship Bible Institute lasted all the way up to COVID. Now, I don't know if restarting that, just like a lot of other things, is going to be possible. Um, Dad is 86. Mom is 72. I'm 41. And there aren't any students younger than me, I think. So it may be hard to do that, but she's not forgotten. The fact that I can sit here and teach you has to do with Dr. Desi Webster. You see how that works? The fact that I have a church that goes to this leaking has to do with Sergeant Rufus Abercrombie. Ab 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 but I'm just saying we're going to be fair about this because what the things that you do that Christ has, has motivated you to do will last no matter who opposes you. And Mary and the alabaster box that you remember and the seven disciples that you really can't name demonstrates the Lord Jesus has come down on the sight of those who he has chosen and are doing what they do for love of him. All right. And let me just say about the seven disciples, I'm going to say this again in closing. Let me just be fair. Uh, their names are going to be inscribed on the foundations of the new Jerusalem. So when we get to heaven, we will see them every day. It's not that they were forgotten. The Lord did not take everything they did, zeroed them out because they messed up here. But for right now, <laughs> mess with God's women and pay for it. Just saying, for you gentlemen that are living, for you listening right now, mess with God's women, you're going to pay a price for that. Just like anybody who messes with God and then is going to pay a price. God doesn't play favorites. He does not play favorites. Just know. In the world, men mess with women and seem to get away with it. Try that and call yourself a Christian and see what happens. All right. We're almost done with our study. So how does Jesus have the right to, to, to buck the culture of men then and now and give women all this kindness and gentleness and privileges and, and, and respect and memorials and all the rest? Jesus is just a man. No. We started out with Jesus is God and fully man. Our last lesson closes out with Jesus is man, but also God. We're going to see him the way John last saw him. And let there be no doubt in anyone's mind that yes, Jesus is forever going to be in the flesh. He will forever be God in the flesh. But what he does and how he treats men and women has the force of the almighty eternal God, the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end, the one who has the keys of hell and death, the one who opens and no man shuts, and the one that shuts and no man opens, who has the key of David. That is the one whose behavior toward women we have been observing. And he is man, yes, but he is also God. And if you think you are going to have a standard for how you as a man are going to walk through this world, remember that he has the keys of hell and death because he's God. We'll get to that next time. Thank you for listening and goodbye.